I think it's unfortunate that Wonder Woman gets the short shrift. And, for... and did, did Fanboy D break? I don't know if he brought this up or if it was an article that I read, but someone brought up the fact that Wonder Woman is just not a really strong character because she preaches peace. She wants oh, to bring God, peace. Oh, God, that pisses me off. Yeah. Which I don't, because that's Superman what Superman does. The same, does. Yeah, Superman's the same way. Yeah. And I don't understand that. She's an ambassador for peace. Right. From Themyscira. And, like, I don't really understand what... But, but that makes makes her weak at and all. She's, and she's a warrior. Mm -hmm. And someone had commented that, you know, she will kill, but she doesn't. And she did. Look at it in front of Crisis. Yeah. So, I think people who don't give Wonder Woman the credit I think she deserves are being very short-sighted in their history of comics. And when you just downright insult the character like Bendis did, you know... That is, I think you do more than a disservice to the character. I think you do a disservice to the genre of comic books. When you when you can come out and bend this uh, as a joke, um, and again, I'm saying this kind of like, you know, I mean, anybody who, who has any experience with Brian Bendis knows the guy likes just saying controversial stuff. And, and he'll insult his readers, and he'll do whatever he wants just to be a wonk and just to be, you know, to be funny. And, and he'll tell you later, ah, ha, ha, I was just joking. But when he kind of says that Spider-Woman has a better costume than, than Wonder Woman does, and that Wonder Woman is a walking STD, you know, that, that to me, I mean, coming from a creator in the business, that's really, right. that's really doing a disservice. And, and again, he... Because we're in the industry, we kind of know that he's kind of ribbing Gail Simone. Oh, yeah. Because they even had this thing going on. But, all right, let's... And this goes back to the problem that we've had with Bendis in the way that he writes his book. He writes his books, and we've discussed this many times before. I'm not going to get into it again. But he writes his books as he might be a misogynist. Okay. And he continues to portray that... That kind of mentality when he comes out on Twitter and he posts that with no context whatsoever saying that Wonder Woman is a walking STD. Now, when you portray women in a certain way in your books, mm -hmm. fans might start looking at women in your books in that way. Mm -hmm. Now, when a top writer, the top, the top writer in the industry comes out and says it against Wonder Woman, what is going to... How much will make a bet? That, that right there solidified the mentality that fanboys have of Wonder Woman. Because Brian Michael Bendis said that, even maybe in a half-hearted, jokingly manner, that that gives them all the credit in the world that mm -hmm. that's why they hate Wonder Woman. Because mm -hmm. there's there so many, a lot of fans look up to Brian Michael Bendis. And when you say that about the top female character in the industry, yeah. a lot of people are going to have that mentality from here on mm -hmm. out. Yeah. You know, I think... Uh, well, first, you really can't criticize Bendis because one, he is a top selling Marvel writer and two he'll always have the fallback position, I was only joking yeah, you know, that's what he's going to say you can't take me seriously because I was only joking and it's and it's just comics, well, uh, the, well I think there, were, there is an accountability though to what you say, yeah and as we've seen already like mainstream blogs have caught wind of that Twitter post and they're taking it Taking, Again, we know we're in the industry. We know that he's half joking, but people are taking it like this guy is a top writer in comic books, and this is what he's saying about Wonder Woman. Right. And, and it just ruffles a lot of feathers. It ruffles that, feathers, that yeah, and makes the industry look bad. Right. No, and and again, just for the sake of clarification, I mean, we know. I mean, the way I look at it, it's just Bendis being a Marvel wonk. Of course, he's going to say that Wonder Woman is not as good as Spider Woman. He is a he is a die hard Marvel guy. He's already he's always said he will not work for DC. He would never work for DC even if they offered him a job. You know, which is actually is unfortunate because I think there's some titles in DC that Bendis could do that he could really help, and it will probably maybe refresh his work. That if he went over to DC and he had to work with other characters in another universe, it might might help him rediscover that thing about him that was really, really good in the beginning. Again, powers in the beginning and all these really strong female protagonists that he would write in the beginning and, and, and all this really smart, witty dialogue that, that propelled the story along and didn't just, you know, do the Scooby and Shaggy running in place bit, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, maybe if Bendis decided to go, heck... Maybe if Bendis decided to friggin' write Wonder Woman, 
maybe that would help him discover that part of him that really appealed to me as a fan of his. You know, but unfortunately, lately, he's just been taking the placate the fanboys route and in placating many fanboys, and I can say all fanboys, but in placating many fanboys, you have to take this objectifying look point of view of, of, of female characters. Let's look at it this way. The strongest, the character that he loves the most, that he claims to love the most, the strongest character that he had, the strongest female character that he had in New Avengers, right? Spider-Woman? Ended up being the Skrull Queen yeah. that betrayed the New Avengers and ended up starting the, the, the secret invasion. Okay? That was the strongest female character in the whole book, and he essentially gutted that character. Mm -hmm. All the character development that, that, that Jessica Jones had, no, not Jessica Jones, uh, Jessica, Jessica Drew. Drew had throughout that entire run of New Avengers out the window. Because that wasn't really her. That was a Skrull Queen. Jessica Drew disappeared at the end of the Spider-Woman miniseries that that um, uh, Brian Bendis did with the Luna Brothers. So what what's going on there? What happened there? This character that he claims to love so much that he says is better than Wonder Woman. And he has that done shit been, with her. Yeah, yeah the character's been in cold storage. Back. Yeah, the character's been in cold storage ever since. So to me... Well, he's supposed to be coming out with that, that miniseries again that got... Canceled, I think. And they're going to re-solicit it later. You know, to me, it just seems ridiculous, again, to take these other characters... And I'm sorry, Spider-Woman, secondary character. She's a friggin... She's, yeah. she's like a, the second... Every, almost everybody in New Avengers, whether you like it or not, is a secondary character. A secondary character. character. You know? So to compare Spider-Woman to Wonder Woman and to say that Spider-Woman's a better character than Wonder Woman... That is a friggin' slap in the face. That is a friggin' slap in the face to to an icon. Sorry, an icon. So, so you know what? And then if you guys don't like Wonder Woman, that's your prerogative. But you know, if you don't read it and you're only going by what Brian Michael Bendis says or what other people say, right? Then it, it, get a mind of your own. Right. Go if if, if you guys want to read a good smart story and if, after you read the entire Greg Rucker run and then you still think you don't like Wonder Woman fine then at least we can have a, a civil debate because I know where you might be coming from but it just to, for the sake of just ripping on it for no apparent reason other than I don't like Wonder Woman I really have no reasons why but uh, maybe. well you know there wasn't a really good story that no one really told a really good story with her oh wait I'm sorry Greg Rucker and JT Jones yeah. did, did any if if you read that story if you read Fat that, Boy, he didn't think it was iconic, though. He told me I brought that. I brought that he didn't like it. No, the the original graphic novel that they did together. Yeah, he didn't like it. He said it was a good story, but it's not an iconic story. I, All right. I don't know what the hell you want, man. I don't know what the hell you want either. I don't know what it takes. <laughs> I respect your opinion because you know, I respect it. But you know, like I said, <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> Oh, I just say that because I can't. Oh, well. Yeah, well. How do we always end up on a Bendis rant? We have tried like the devil to keep from getting oh. ranting on Bendis. Well, we actually haven't even reviewed a Bendis book, and that's not actually on purpose. That's on purpose, yeah. That's I'm on tired. Purpose, I'm, I'm just tired I'm, of I'm shit. I'm just tired. I've, I've, well, I, we haven't talked about him for a while, so I'm, yeah. maybe we we'll just get it out of our system for the next couple months. I, I would really like, you know what, I really think that if Bendis wrote a DC book, um, that would revive him. That would revive him as a writer. I think that would be kind of cool. I, I think it would be really cool. I know. The problem is that Marvel lets him do whatever he wants. If you can do whatever you want at Marvel, he has no restrictions put on him. You know, he's, get, he's allowed to be a little, you know, creatively lazy. You know, he needs to be given some good, a nice box and some problems to work through and work out of. And I, I will say this: I think, I think Bendis would write a kick-ass Wonder Woman. I think he would write a kick-ass Wonder Woman. Well, we don't respect the character. Like, how can I respect the work that he does on it? Well, I think again, he was just being a wonk. Well, he was, but all right, yeah. yeah. I, I tell you, he's going to get a lot of respect if a DC gives him some serious cheddar to work on that book. I hope not. I hope I never see that. <laughs> I don't think you will. I don't think anyone's got to worry about that. All right. 
Well, thanks again, folks, for joining us here on the Comic Culture Warrior YouTube channel. As always, we look forward to your comments, your responses, and so on. And Fanboy D again. All due respect. We love you. Uh, and if you guys haven't been checking the Fanboy D's uh, videos out, check them out. He was on hiatus for a little while, but he's done some, some pretty strong ones since he's come back. They're actually really, really good, so you should all check them out if you get a chance. And, um, you, have you noticed... He's a new Orbitz commercial guy. That's why he's I, been on hiatus. He's been doing those high 35, high 35, you know? I never, I never Did you know that? Check it, check it out. That's Fanboy D. Dude, aces. I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> well, you'll see it. He does the commercials for Orbitz gum. 35 pieces. He's walking through the streets of London, pushing bubble gum, but pushing chewing gum. And he's rapping. Pretty cool with the hat. Fanboy D, you pull off that hat really well. <laughs> All right, I think folks. Done. I think we're done too. We'll see you next time. It took a bigger pack to clean up Big Pack. It cleaned up my garbage truck in mouth, Jack. 35, I'm dropping 35. 35 pieces, that no job. I was the dirtiest mouth in London City. My mouth was so pillow fluffing, I'm pretty. 35, I'm dropping 35. 35 pieces, eat chips and pie. I'm dropping 35, I'm dropping 35. 35 pieces, big packs alive. New Orbit Big Pack, 35 pieces of clean, no matter what.